Hey guys, uh, today I want to show you how to match um, photos to a plate that you have, or just basic color correction for whether it's concept work or matte painting or photo illustration, that sort of stuff. So essentially here I have a plate from Iceland that I really like that I want to use, say, for a painting or something like that. And then I want to match a different photo from Iceland to it. And you can already see the problem here. It's got quite a strong color cast, different time of year maybe, different time of day. It's just, it's not, it's not working with our original image. And you might think that because it has such a strong color cast that it might be unsalvageable, but there are a few things that we can do to fix this. Um, one of the first things for something that has this strong of a color cast that I would probably do is come into filter, camera raw filter, and then just change your white balance. So set that to auto and then mess with these sliders until it's closer to um, our initial plate. You can even come in here and come into the hue, saturation, and luminance and adjust all these accordingly. This is really great for color correction stuff, but um, that's not what we're going to do today. So this would be a really good starting point. You could adjust that in there, and you can already see it's working a lot better than it was. But in order to show you how powerful the color adjustment layers we're going to work with are, I'm going to start with just this strong color cast image and work from scratch. And so I'm going to go through these three adjustment layers right now. So essentially when you're color correcting, there are three things that matter, hue, saturation, and value, right? And so right now you can see that the value is actually looking pretty good. And for this particular layer, it's just a color layer with a solid color adjustment layer and it's set to a neutral gray. That's all this is. And this helps us check our values very easily. And so the values are actually looking okay. It's a little bright in here, but we can fix that. Um, the other one is a color match layer. And so what this is, is also a solid color layer set to a neutral gray, usually 50% gray, but you can slide this up or down depending on uh, what you want to look at. And so this is actually set to luminosity. And you'll see what this does. This is a normal layer, it doesn't do anything, but you set it to luminosity and this starts showing us our colors. And you'll see right in here that this is all that reddish color that's coming through. Anything that's sort of a gray is something that doesn't have very much color and not very much saturation. So we want to get this to match this. And so turning that off, and we'll come down to the saturation match. And what the saturation match is doing is showing that any of the dark areas, there's very little saturation. The lighter areas have more saturation. And this is actually looking okay so far for us, but the color's wrong, right? And what this layer actually is, is a selective color adjustment layer. And it's set to absolute, which is crucial. Relative doesn't work. It has to be set to absolute. And what you do is for all the colors, you slide it black all the way to the left. And then for white, neutral, and blacks, you slide black all the way to the right. So what this does is gives us that saturation look so we can match. So each of these three layers is going to help us with one aspect of matching the color here. And the way to go about this is to figure out which one needs the most correction first. That's usually the easiest way to do it. So our saturation is looking okay. Our values are looking okay. It's our colors that are messed up. And so the colors is where we're going to start. And so I'm going to come down to the match layer. I'm going to create just a basic curves layer and I'm going to clip it. So you can either click the clip thing here or you can click between the layers and it'll clip that mask. And what's important here too, it's not always going to matter, but in some instances it does, is I'm just going to set this to color because we're going to use this for color correction. We don't want this curves layer to affect our values. So what I'm going to do is come into here and there's the red, green, and blue channels and we can adjust these separately to get our color correction. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to select our red channel and this little hand tool right here, what this allows us to do that levels doesn't have is allows us to select a range of color and adjust that specifically within our curves. And so going down to the red channel and right here you can see there's too much red. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to select this red area and pull it down. And you'll already see that those greens are starting to match a little bit better, right? So all throughout it's, it's getting closer already. And so I can turn this on or off and you can see it's got quite a strong greenish neutral color cast, but we'll, we'll address that in a second. So we'll come down in here and we'll go to our green channels next and we'll see, we may not need to touch the green channel yet. It may not do anything for us. So I'll pull that up a little bit. Maybe that helps a little. I'm just going to leave it right there for now. And we're going to come in the blue channel and see if adjusting how much blue is in there is going to make a difference. And pulling the blue out actually is helping a little bit. And what you're going to see up here is that it's getting quite green, and in here we actually have a bit of um, bluish and magenta tones, and we want to reintroduce that back into here. And so what I'm going to do is go back through our layers again, go back through the channels, 
use the hand tool. And then in here, it looks like we need to reintroduce some of those reds, not into the green so much, but into these areas in between. So I'm just gonna grab somewhere in there and start pulling that red back in just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come down to the blues because it looks like we need some blue in there. And you'll see it's starting to match a little bit closer. And then maybe if I come into our greens and remove some of that green out of these areas, that'll also help. Yeah, and you can see that's matching a lot nicer now. All right, so we're gonna leave that there for now. I'll come out here and you'll see overall, the color match is not too bad. But what we're having a problem with now is our saturation. You'll see that the saturation in these areas, it's a little bit dark. It's not matching this part in here, right? And our value match, this area is a little bit too light. But we're gonna start with saturation. Come back in here and do the saturation. I'm gonna create a hue saturation layer and just clip this. And then what I'm gonna do is grab this hand tool. It's the same as with the curves one. And we're just gonna select this range right here. And that's gonna adjust our yellows and bring those yellows up in saturation. But it's grabbing some other areas that I may not want it to. So what I'm gonna try to do is prevent it from getting those reds too much. We wanna affect mostly the greens and yellows. So just push this around a little bit and then just keep adjusting this until we think it looks okay. So I'll turn off that match and you'll see that the hue saturation Punching it up a little bit does help. This area though is looking too light and we'll come into our value match and you'll see that's our problem right there right now. So basically what we wanna do is each time we notice an issue, just address that issue. Just go through each individual thing. So go through your saturation, your color, your values, and just keep cycling through them until it starts working for you. So now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna create a basic levels layer, clip that as well. And then in this area, I'm just gonna pull this down until it starts to match, right? Nothing too crazy. I think somewhere like in there is gonna work. It's affected the rest of this. So essentially what I'm just gonna do is fill that layer mask with black and just brush white into the area we want it in with a soft brush. And that's super easy to do. So that's looking okay. I think it might need to be just a shade darker. All right, so we'll turn off that value match and you'll see that value in there is working a lot nicer. And that background, all these colors, they're all they're all coming together quite nicely. We've got like the sort of magentas and subtle color casts in there that are working very nicely now. And this green in here, I'm feeling it's not quite as saturated. It's not quite matching this as much as I feel like I want it to. So I'll check that saturation again. And you'll see it's still a little bit dark. So I'll come in here to the hue saturation layer and then I'll grab that hand again and I'm gonna punch this guy back up. It's getting a little bit closer and so I'll turn that off and we'll see that it's matching a little bit nicer. Another thing you can do where you can selectively target color ranges is with a selective color layer. And I like to do that to tweak things and push them into our final range. So I'll do a selective color. I'll clip this again and then we'll just come into our yellow range and we'll just move the slider left and right and see how it affects those uh, greens in there. We'll go through each of these color ranges and just see if we can nudge it into place and see what works for us. Maybe darken it a little bit, come back out. It's a bit of trial and error, but not so much as if you didn't have these uh, adjustment layers to help you correct. So we can turn this on or off and you'll see it just kind of pushes that into place a little bit. So you see overall the colors are actually matching pretty good and it's sitting in there quite nicely. Now we could tweak these all day long and get everything a lot closer, but you get the idea of the process. Going through each of these, making sure each one is sitting in there nicely and that you have a decent match. And that's really what matters. You just, if you go through each of these individually and then create adjustment layers accordingly to address each of those things, then you should be able to push that and pull it into range where you need it. So one of the last things I'll do right now is to help this sit back in there a little bit nicer is I'll just create a quick lighten layer. And I'm just gonna set this down to something like eight or 9% or maybe 10. And what I'm gonna do is just select a blue from the background, maybe darken it just a little bit. And then with a the lighten layer, I'll clip that as well. And when you brush with a light and layer, it's going to take the value that's in the layer and basically punch up the areas that are uh, darker than it, essentially lightening them. And so what that'll do is push a little bit of blue atmosphere into those darker areas. And you can see the difference it makes when we do this, which just it removes a bit of the color cast that we have in there that we added that has the magentas and stuff like that. And so doing this, you'll see that we get a much better match overall in terms of visually having it feel a little bit more natural. 
And so what I'll do too is just, you know, sit there, brush it out a little bit, maybe dial that layer back just a tad, you know, and you could spend all day doing stuff like this. But as you can see where we're coming from, this is our original photo and you see the strong color cast and then we do all these adjustments and we get something that's fairly close. And I'm not completely happy with this, but you'll see just how much we can push and pull those colors. And just as a recap, when you come in and do the curves layer, like I said, usually you're going to want to make sure your curves are set to color so it's just affecting your color, right? And then use the hand tool to grab the particular ranges in the red, green, and blue channels. And then you can adjust those using your color match layer and get everything into where you need it. The value match, same thing. You know, we didn't have to do a whole lot of it this time because I think the values are actually working okay. But I could lighten these dark areas a little bit and maybe set it back even further, but I'm just going to leave it. And then with your saturation, same thing. So you want to match your saturation and make sure everything feels pretty cohesive overall. You know, and like the hue saturation layer, often you can set this to just saturation. And you'll see that that actually makes a difference in terms of lightening up if we wanted to lighten up those greens at all. So you may be happier with just having it adjust the saturation. Maybe this looks better to you. So you can do that. And then with like our levels layer, that's probably adjusting the colors a little bit. So if you don't want it to touch the colors, Set it to luminosity. Not much of a difference in this particular instance, but just keep that in mind. If you want your adjustment layers to affect only the thing they're supposed to adjust, change their layer blending mode. The selective color layer, that just helps us push or pull things into range, you know? And so if we wanted to take any of these other colors, like if we wanted to punch up these reds, you know, you can see how we can pull those reds back in there, right in this area. It's, it's quite apparent if we uh, pull those cyans around. See right there. And this is always, this is a really great tool for uh, tweaking your colors. You can have a bunch of selective color layers or just one. And you'll see the kind of difference that makes. That pulls those reds out a little bit and makes it sit back in there even nicer. I'll provide a link on Dropbox for an action that creates these adjustment layers for you so you don't have to do it from scratch every time. You know, so hopefully that's helpful and wasn't too long-winded. Um, have fun and good luck.